Hey guys, today we're going to talk about another card that has spiked in price. This card has also been connected to Craig. Craig is noted for buying this card and selling it and raising the price from $700 around April 18th. And today the card price is 14 over $1,400, probably $1,500 when you if you wanted a near mint copy, the only copies on TCG Player right now are Light Play. So the card is good. It's played in Legacy Lands. But is it $1,500, $1,400 good? The answer is no. This is a card that was bought out by Craig. And its price has just skyrocketed to the point that it really makes it unlikely anyone who doesn't have this card will be able to play the optimal version of Legacy Lands. So it takes away from the players in my opinion and it takes away from the game. It takes away from the community when one person has let's say 20, I don't know how many he has, 25 of this but he's not using them and his only objective is to raise the price to make money. The end goal here for Craig is to make money. That's the end goal of all MTG Finance, including the finance that I do on this channel. And you might say, am I a hypocrite? No, I know what I am. <laughs> I know why MTG Finance is bad. Craig is an example of someone who takes it to the extreme. So doing a dollar to $10 or having a really good speculation, that will pay for a collection. Craig wants to pay for a mortgage. He wants a, he wants a nice boat. He wants a castle in the sky. And that's what's happening right now is he's recognized that Wizard of the Coast won't do anything or the reserve list makes the bottom very high. He does not have any fear for these cards to be reprinted or to drop tremendously in price. Worst case, he breaks even. Best case, he can buy a home. Now, he will repeat this over and over again until the market, until those not cards that haven't gone to crazy prices and what this creates is it creates a system of buyouts it creates panic in the market so not only craig but craig like individuals will start doing this because they've seen it work and now you have a legacy market because legacy the reserve list only really affects legacy and vintage that makes it impossible for anyone new to buy a deck it also destroys that community. I love Legacy, and Legacy has been dying. People have said it's dead. I don't necessarily believe it's dead. But this is the... This is it. I mean, if no one can afford the cards because it's in the hands of very few people, like Craig, then no one can play the game. If they cannot play Legacy, they won't buy any Legacy cards and the format will lose support, it will lose its community, it will not exist anymore as a format. Legacy will become the new vintage, and vintage will become even worse than that, and the modern will become the new legacy, now that Wizards of the Coast will no longer support it, in the Pro Tour at least. What You have an interesting dynamic uh, where an unregulated market for something that cannot be reprinted and something that's needed to play a children's card game. Let's just be honest. That's what the game is really. It's owned by Hasbro, which is a company that produces children's toys. Will no longer be. It will price out people who are actually love legacy. And that's the saddest part about this whole process. Is it's natural. It is the natural order when Wizards of the Coast refuses to reproduce reserve list. This has probably gone on for years and years and years. There's just never been a person like Craig who is willing to take, willing to trade, I assume, hateful comments and dislikes for the fame, for being that Martin dude, farmer bro. And that's what Craig is. It took a long time to get to Craig. To build up this character but now mtg finance finally has someone that we can point to and name and say hey was it craig 
maybe even if it wasn't Craig, it was Craig-like individuals.